Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 7681198. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. I am going to read some scriptures to pull out principles that have been coloring everything that we are doing. I want you to open your Bibles to Ruth chapter 4. Ruth chapter 4. I am going to read some verses there and trust God to bring out the issues quick, quick. Then went Boaz to the gate and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, Ho, oh, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou will redeem it, redeem it. But if thou will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know for there is none to redeem it beside thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabites, the wife of the dead, for, uh, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now, this was the former, the manner in the former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore, the king's man said to him, unto Boaz, buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said to the elders and to all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilons and Malons of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth, the Moabites, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife? To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. Ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is coming to thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which too did build the house of Israel. And do thou worthily in Ephrata, and be famous in Bethlehem. And let thy house be like the house of Pharaoh, whom Tamar bare unto Judah, bear unto Judah, of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. 
And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which has not left thee this day without a king's man, that his name may be famous in Israel. And it shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life, and a nourisher of thine old age, for thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, has borne him. And Naomi took the child, and laid it in her bosom, and she became a nurse unto it. And the woman, the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Let me stop there. May God bless his word to our heart in the name of Jesus. Uh, it's, it's such a long passage that yes. if I allow you to read it in Yoruba, all my time will have finished. Now, you remember the story of Naomi and Elimelech and Ruth. Naomi, Elimelech, you remember that because there was famine in the land. This man Elimelech traveled to the country of Moab. He left the promised land. He left the land of covenant. He left the lineage of covenant. This was a man of the tribe of Judah. He's of Bethlehem, Judah. He's of the city that the Lord Jesus Christ himself is going to eventually come from. Actually, this man was positioned in the lineage that will have given birth to David the king and eventually give birth to the Lord Jesus Christ. But because of hardship, economic hardship, he left divine location, he left divine uh, dealings he left divine principles just because there was stomach problem and he traveled abroad and as he traveled abroad in search of greener pastures he's thinking that I will make it when I go there Maybe it is even possible that he was thinking he just go abroad quickly and make some quick dollars and then I will come back and still come to put my head in the lineage that is going to produce the me. But you know what happened to him. Like it happens to everybody that goes that journey. He went out with a wife with two sons according to his wife later. Said, she said I went out full. I went out full. That's a man that was hungry. But he said, I went out full. He went out full of promise. Full of divine covenant. Full of spiritual realities. But by the time he was coming back, he came back how? I didn't hear you. He came back empty. The man died. And the man didn't come back. So I suspect. It's my suspicion. No. That it was probably Naomi that was pushing her husband and say, Is this how we are going to die in this place where there is no money? Because she was the one who is testifying later that that I, I went out full but I returned empty she lost husband she lost children she lost everything everything by the time she was coming back can be packed together put on her head and on the head of another woman that was all she returned to Israel with. but 
The real issue today is this. Elimelech was a man that was positioned to bring back, to give back to the king. But as he went to die, his two sons died. That lineage was going to come to an end. So God needed to pass through another lineage. What God was planning to bring through Elimelech, he has gone to go and squander it abroad. But as she was, Naomi was coming back, she came back with root. Now, I don't have time to explain all I would have loved to say about Ruth. But it looked to me as if Ruth got a glimpse into that glory that was supposed to be for that family. Even though she was a Moabite, even though she was not a part of the covenant, but maybe the money altars in the house of Elimelech every time once they married spoke to her about something that was supposed to happen in Israel. Maybe when sister Naomi began to realize her mistake, maybe she started talking about the glory that they have lost. So she told herself, let me go back. God is a merciful God who knows maybe he can do something so as she decided to go back the two uh, daughter-in-laws followed her so he said what, why are you following me for? there is no more anything there is no husband in my stomach nothing but Ruth said I'm not following you for husband I'm not following you for the things that I can get in Moab. There is something in Israel that I cannot get in Moab. I want to know this God. I want to work with this God that you were talking about. That's how Ruth came back. So in my mind, Ruth was the remnant of that lineage. Ruth, what you are you following me this evening? Sam Ruth was the remnant of that lineage. Ruth, what you are Elimelech had died. Elimelech itiku. Malon had died. Malon itiku. Chilo had died. Chilo no itiku. Naomi is old. Naomi is not in Tarupo. She cannot bear children again. The only person left that can bear children that can continue that lineage is root. The only one connected to that extinct lineage that was dying was Ruth. Only Ruth in so as Ruth was walking up and down in Israel, God was saying, if we are going to revive what Elimelech went to go and kill, if we are going to bring back what Elimelech went to go and lose in Moab, Ruth is our only opportunity. You know the way God looked at Ruth was wonderful for me. A young widow. She's She's, she has not even given birth to a child before her husband died. On top of that, she's a Moabite. That God has said the Moabite must not enter the congregation of the Lord until the tenth generation. And yet, 
because of her faith and because of the fact that she is the only connection left God decided whoever marries Ruth anybody who marries Ruth is going to continue that lineage have you followed me with my story to this point so when Ruth got back to Israel and she was going up and down she was not attractive her situation is very pitiable anybody who marries her there's a lot of problem for that person in Israel you marry a Moabite you cannot take her to church if she decides to follow you to church she will not only stay she's not even going to be allowed into the outer court she must stay outside the church premises if she wants to hear anything it is whatever filters outside her companions where she sits in church companions in church are women doing their menstruation lepers all those people that cannot enter into the congregation that's where she sits permanently and they say marry her I hope you are following me. So when Ruth now went to Boaz, and uh, you know all the story. I don't. That's why I left chapter one, two, three because we don't have the time. So when she went to lay at the feet of Boaz, and she said, "You are the near kinsman." Come and do the perform the right. the place of the kinsman to me. Who are saying my daughter? Who are you? When you look at her, you know, you know it was in the night. When she opened the the face, ah, root. Only one root, ni. Loto, true, true. I am a kinsman. Hey, but I'm sure many things must have gone on in the mind of Boaz. Many things that later went on in the mind of the nearer kinsman. If I if I marry this girl, these are the implications. These are the implications. These are the implications. Are the implications. Are the implications. But Boaz had eyes. Only Oju. I pray that God will give you those eyes today in the name of Jesus. Eyes to see beyond the physical. She's not pretty. Yes. She's a widow. Yes. She's a Moabite. Yes. But this is the only remnant. This is the remnant of the divine lineage. This is the remnant of the covenant family. And he had an opportunity. Even though he is also a member of the extended family. But Elimelech's right was number one. The second person is this nameless kinsman that we don't know. I am number three. I am number three. That's Boaz talking. But this is an opportunity to come into the lineage and labor with God to rescue the remnant of the divine family. If the root should die without a child, 
that lineage will finish. It has implications. Only, only tomorrow. It's not that attractive. But there is a labor. It, lo- it looks as if God was saying, Boaz, Boaz, I have a problem. I have been, I've been pushed into a corner. The lineage I chose that has been coming from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they've been coming like that, and that is meant to go to David and go to Jesus Christ. I made the mistake of entering into a useless man like Elimelech. I'm talking as a human being. God doesn't make mistakes. I hope you know. I'm just so that you will see the story. Are you following me? So that somebody will not say, Brother Larry said, God said he made a mistake. I have entered And Elimelech has gone to go and die. His two sons have died. The only connection left with that family is this widow woman. Young widow. Moabite young widow. Will you marry her for me? So that we can reclaim that line. Have you followed me to that point? Now it's time for me to start applying it. That is the eyes that God has given us in peace house. Is that revival is still possible? There is a remnant in the body of Christ. There is a group of people that are still panting after God. And somebody needs to labor on this woman to continue the lineage of the Messiah that will bring the king back to his throne. Our understanding is that there is a root. Even though it looks as if the whole of the body of Christ has gone away with the devil. Many people are doing many things in the pulpit now in the name of God that we should not even be talking about. People who call the name of the Lord, they are doing unthinkable things. People in the name of being a pastor. They are impregnating people's children. They are stealing money. They are doing everything. Church members who say they are Christians. They are the one championing corruption. If they are going to try 500 people for corruption. Maybe 400 of them will be bearing Christian names. They are going to church. They are bearing the name of the Lord. But they are no longer connected with God. But there is this root. She's is a remnant. She's not attractive if you labor with her there is nothing to gain from her you know when eventually they brought this near kinsman they say ah Naomi Naomi. that came back from the country of the Moab she has a parcel of land and uh, you know by right of kinsman you are the next to Elimelech and I am after you will you buy the land what did the man say immediately is eh? I will I will, I will. Ah, then Boa said the day you buy the land, you are going to buy something along with it. Oh, say, what is that? They say root. Only root. Oh, root. The Moabite Moabites. Oh, ah. What did you say? Oh, Ru, 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 what? Ru, 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 Kenny. 
I hope you know what you are talking about. So mon kato so ne pare yi. The Moabites. Moabai Moabu. Um to ba if to ba joro land ni. If it's about land, iyan o se problem. That's not a problem at all. Ah ah, ta ba ra le, a ra le kun le ni. If we buy land, we buy land upon land. Ta ba kole a kole mo le ni. If we build house, we build house upon house. Sugbon pe kin wa fe ara Moabu. For me to marry Moabites. Say oh, don't so go cool. here. Yeah, what you are saying is it clear to you? Anything my affect you, you buy me lolly jersey. Somebody I'm going to marry that don't follow me to the church. Anything my affect you, um, um, my, my dear, so much. Don't, don't, don't tell me stop. Don't buy fresh shoes, say yeah. If you want to do that kind of work, to buy that letter. When you buy the land, call Ramu Abu Lelori. Buy Moab along. With Emi Oshekini. I can't do. I, I cannot do that kind of work. Emi Oleshiru Kambenye. Now. What is the nature of our labor in peace house? I know that several of you, you are coming around peace house. You are coming around this route. You are coming around this route. Because you have already seen a land. A land that you can quickly acquire. I don't know what you have seen around this labor that is attractive to you. That looks like the land that you can get from company with us. For some people, uh, we go to peace house meetings. Free food. Free accommodation. Free handout. Free everything. Free transport. Ah, who doesn't like that kind of thing? More so that there is hunger outside now. Am I talking? So Tony B. Part of the problem that we are having now. And one of the reasons why we are making tags very serious. Because we are we are discovering now that some people come to our meetings. They will not come with us when it's time for Bible study. They will not be here when it's time for seminar. When it is around quarter to lunch time, you will see that they will they will arrive. And then they will join us. They will line up on the queues to to buy to to collect food.